Leah Tortilla presents. Hey guys, it's me, Leah Tortilla. Today I'll be showing you how to bake an absolute classic. Apple pie. To start, we're going to get peeling and coring our apples. Now the reason we're starting with our apple filling is so that it's cooled down and ready to go into the pie quicker than it would be if we did it after the, we made the pastry. Now we're using these really big cooking apples just because they're cooking apples so they stew down a lot nicer and they have a better flavour to them when they're cooked. Better flavour than um, regular eating apples. Once you've peeled and cored your apples, we're going to chop them into cubes and put them in a bowl. And once you've done that, a squeeze of lemon juice over the apples to stop the oxidisation process so it stops the apple from going brown. You want reasonably large sized cubes so that they don't stew down to nothing. You still want a nice bite of apple inside of your pie. Not just baby mush. To start the stewing process, we're going to add a large knob of butter to the pan. Put the pan on a medium heat. And as the butter starts to melt, we can add our apples. Without dropping them on the floor. Give the apples a bit of a stir. Get them coated in all the rich, buttery goodness. Or just throw it over the side. Then when your butter has melted, you can go in and add your golden caster sugar. Quite a lot of sugar because cooking apples are very bitter. So you need to equal that out. And then if you have it, add some apple juice. I don't have apple juice, so I'm going to add tropical juice it won't do much to the flavor but it will help with the caramelization process then you want to thoroughly stir all of those ingredients through your apples now i'm just going to add a sprinkle of cinnamon Apple and cinnamon are a great flavour combination. You don't want to add too much cinnamon because it will overpower the apples. You just want that perfect balance in between. I'm going to place a lid on the pot, let the apples steam through, and we'll come back and stir it in a bit. Unfortunately, I had to take a rather large, rather large, rather long phone call and someone had to step in and save my apples for me. So, with a large slotted spoon, they removed my apples and put them on the windowsill to cool down. And with the remaining liquid that was in the bottom of the pot, they turned into a caramel. And this is that caramel. <laughs> they did that by adding a small amount of butter and letting it reduce until it coated the back of the spoon. And this caramel will be returned to these apples just before we put it in our pie. So let's get back to our pastry after all of that. <laughs> in this bowl, I have my plain flour, my sugar and my salt. I'm now I'm going to sift this mixture into a big bowl. To our lovely sift mixture, we're going to add our cold blocks of unsalted butter. Now the reason that the butter has to be cold is so that it makes the pastry nice and crisp and makes each layer of pastry 
nice and flaky and delicious basically and we're going to rub the butter into our floury mixture until it forms breadcrumbs it's a bit messy i have to say once you've got this breadcrumb consistency and there's no large lumps of butter we're going to make a well in the middle of our mixture just like that nice well and we're going to add our eggs and two tablespoons of cold water one two and this is the part where it gets really messy we're going to get a hand in there and mix it until it becomes a dough you can see it's starting to come together nicely When your mixture comes all together, this is what it should look like. Nice moldable dough. Right, we're going to roll it until it's nice and smooth, a nice smooth ball. And we're going to cover it in cling film and leave it in the fridge to rest for 30 minutes before we start rolling it out into a, putting it into our pastry tin. When smoothing it out, ready to go in the fridge, make sure it has a nice flat top to it and bottom, so therefore it's easier to roll out when we get a rolling pin on it in a bit. While you've got 30 minutes spare as your pastry is resting in the fridge, why don't we grease our tart tin, pastry case, whatever it's called, with a nice knob of butter grease it up good just like in my lemon cake video we're going to rub it with butter thoroughly and then we're going to sprinkle flour on it so that the pastry does not stick exhibit a so now our pastry is nice and rested we're going to prepare our work surface ready to roll out our dough I'm going to roll this out to the thickness of a one pound coin and we need to get the width the same size as our pie tin pastry case that thing <laughs> You want a nice cold work surface with pastry. You want everything as cold as you can get it. Cold hands, cold surfaces, cold butter. You name it, it's got to be cold. As you can see, they've rolled it out so that it's going to fit this perfectly. Maybe slightly more than perfectly. But now we're going to take our dough, get it on the back of this rolling pin, transport it to our tin. Gently. We're going to make sure that our pastry is fully lining our tin. Another, another quick tip for making sure that your pastry case is fully lined. You take a ball of the dough and you press it gently into the edges and the corners of your pastry. And that makes sure that it is properly lined. Because we've been playing with our pastry for a little bit, it needs to go back into the fridge for about 15 minutes just to rest again.
there's a lot of resting when it comes to pastry. And I have just noticed the amount of mess I've got on myself. So you guys might want to wear an apron to prevent this from happening. <laughs> 15 minutes has passed, so now I'm taking my pastry out of the fridge and I'm going to brush the bottom of it with our apple caramel that was made for me earlier. Now, I would have done all of that, but like I said, I had an unexpected long phone call that I had to deal with, so we're just gonna brush this on the bottom. But don't use all of it because we're going to save some more for later to dollop on top of our apples before we add the pastry top on. So then we get our apples. Excuse the beeping, that's just the dishwasher done. And we're going to put them into our pie. You want to make sure that these are quite dry so you see the liquid that's in the bottom of here you don't want that in this so just avoid that liquid and just get the apples in there you should really use a slotted spoon but my slotted spoon is in dishwasher i mean dishwasher's ready now but it wasn't so that is why i'm being stupid and using a wooden spoon Don't be afraid to really pack your pie. Then we take the rest of our caramel and blob it around all over the place, all over the apples. This will cook and spread out anyway. I just moved the apple pie out of the way. I've put it back in the fridge while we roll out the top. And what I didn't film earlier was me cutting away the excess pastry from the pie, which this is that that I cut off. And we're gonna use the excess pastry to do the top of our pie. So like before, you wanna roll it out. Thickness of a one pound coin, maybe a little bit thinner, but not too much thinner. This is gonna go on top of our pie. I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Um, um, I did not have enough excess pastry to make the lid big enough for my pie. So I've added a little bit of pastry that I made earlier to my mix just to make it go that little bit further. So once again, we're just gonna check we've rolled out our pastry to the right size. Yeah, I think we've done it. And we're going to take it on the back of our rolling pin. In this mug here, I have a one beaten egg, my pastry brush, and we're going to brush the edges of the pie with our egg to make sure the top sticks to the bottom. See? Nice and generous with that egg. Brush the ring. And this is when the top meets the bottom. We're going to gently roll our pastry over the pie. And then we're going to press down the edges. Take a piece of the excess. Just make sure it down and then we're going to take off all of the edges we're going to make sure that we seal our pie so that none of the apples explode out of it you take your thumb and your forefinger against the pastry like this the top and the bottom you can see that there and you get your finger just like that and that is how you crimp 
so that is our pie completely sealed I'm going to add some personal touches now by engraving my name into the top of it Leah Oh, I'm actually a little bit of square O. Lea Tortilla. When engraving your pie, you want to make sure you don't go all the way into the pastry. You're literally just tearing into the top of it. But after you've done that, you take your egg wash and you brush it all over the pastry. This not only protects the pastry, but when it comes out of the oven, it will have a beautiful brown glow. Almost like a tan, a food tan, if you will. Now this pie is gonna go into a preheated oven at 180 degrees. I've made sure I've not knocked the dial this time so it is on the right temperature and it's going to go in there for about 22 minutes we're going to have a look at it and if it's done we'll take it out if it's not done we'll leave it for another couple of minutes but let's put it in and see shall we now it's time to take the pie out of the oven and i lied when i said it would take about 22 minutes in fact this took about 44 minutes to be ready sometimes i forget that i'm at home cooking and not at work cooking. There's a difference because the oven at work is much better than my oven at home. We've got to be very careful when we take this out of the oven because it's hot and I don't want to drop it. Now doesn't it look beautiful? Look at that golden brown glossy goodness. Now I'm going to let it cool down completely before taking it out of the pastry case and cutting a portion. There you have it, the perfect slice of freshly homemade apple pie. Now I'm going to enjoy this with a generous pouring of double cream or maybe even some custard, who knows? See what I've got in the cupboard. This has been another exciting episode of Leah Tortilla. Make sure you come back next week for another delicious recipe. Don't forget to leave a comment, like and subscribe to my channel. See you later.